Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, a few quick things before we jump into the new episode you're about to check out here. Uh, as you may notice, there are some uh, laughs that you hear in the backdrop, and that is because this episode was filmed in front of a live virtual audience over Zoom. Uh, these shows happen once a month, and if you want to be a part of of the live virtual audience, you can do so by grabbing tickets to one of the upcoming shows uh, right now. They happen on the last Friday of every single month, and it's a new show every time that involves some storytelling and, of course, the socially conscious comedy that you guys uh, are, are about to enjoy in, in just a few minutes. And sometimes there will be some special guests kicking the show off, so it's something that you guys don't want to miss. So if you want to grab tickets, you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com and that's pretty much the one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan so if you enjoy these videos and you want to check out more things that I have put out there uh, you can check out my live stand-up comedy albums you can check out uh, all of the past episodes of this show uh, my interview podcast Taboo Table Talk and join us on the live streams uh, when I stream on Mondays through Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time so again, go check everything out at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. All right, now onwards to the episode. So the story I want to tell you guys is, um, is about my very first apartment that I got. I was like 25, right? Uh, so this is seven, eight years ago that it was the very first apartment that I got. And uh, I got I, I, I was looking around. The reason I wanted to get out was, well, it was time. And I was trying to, like, get the hell away from my parents. It was right. It's like uh, it was at that point in my life where everything that my parents did just annoyed the shit out of me. And I was like, I feel like even though I'm flat broke, uh, I should probably find a different place to live. Uh, so that, you know, I'm not on the six o'clock news for like a triple homicide, murder, suicide situation. Like, I don't need that to happen. So I, I started looking around for an apartment and I finally found one. And it kind of seemed like it was too good to be true. Right. It, it, like cheap rent. Utilities were covered. It was in the city. It was close to all the stuff that I normally do anyway. And I was like, this is awesome. I should go check it out. So I made the phone call in a very like old voice. Uh, and very foreign, uh, broken English, right? He answers the phone. I, I, I give him my information. Uh, I tell him that I'm, I would love to see the apartment. We make a, uh, an arrangement. I go down and I meet this guy and he is the tiniest, oldest Egyptian man that I have ever seen in my life, right? He's like five foot nothing. He's wearing a little hat. He's got glass. He, like he kind of looked adorable, uh, it, and, and I was like, oh man, I want to put you in my pocket, uh, and carry you around everywhere. Like that's how adorable he really looked at the time. And so he, you know, got me into the building and we're looking at it and the building's kind of old. It's, um, the, the structure of the building is, is questionable at best. Uh, let's put it that way. Uh, and to get into the building. So you have a key for the front door, then there's a separate key to get into the door of every floor, right? And you only have the key to your specific floor. And then there's a key to your own apartment. So there's three keys to get into it, right? And he kind of pitched it as like, look at all the security you get. <laughs> and I was like, sure. And I walk into this apartment and it is a fucking mess, you guys. It is a shit show and a half, right? Like there's, there's like, like fucking fire hazards everywhere. The, the the shower isn't really working too great. Uh, and the the stove, it just has a bunch of random shit on it. Uh, and I was like, hey, so uh, so what's the deal, man? Are, are, are we going to like clean up some of this stuff? And he was like, mess, mess will be cleaned up. Mess part of apartment. It's charm. Mess is charm. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of feel like the mess is gross. 
do you, do you not feel like this is gross? <laughs> so I, I thought about it for a minute and I was like, you know what? I'm probably not going to find anywhere else. I really got to get the fuck away from my parents. So I said, fuck it. <laughs> That's basically, that was basically the, 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 the decision. Like I went home and my mom, she did that thing, which I think a lot of moms do, which is like, she cleaned my room. Right. Which is like, don't fucking do that. Like, I know it's a mess, but I know where everything is in that fucking mess. So just leave it alone. And then she cleaned it and I didn't know where anything was. And I was like, fuck it. We're, I'm done. I got to leave. I'm going to go take that shithole and make it my own or whatever. You know, like that stupid, uh, <laughs> that stupid voice in your head. That's like, you can, you can turn a shithole into a, a gem. Right. And it's like, you won't, uh, there's a chance that you might die in that apartment, uh, but you're not going to turn it into a gym. So I decided to sign the lease, and this is where the trouble begins, right? I go down to sign the lease, and I meet the old man outside the apartment, and he starts talking to me, right? He's just asking me regular questions like, where am I from? How old am I? You know, what, you know, what part of town do your parents live in? And then he looks at me, and he looks at my, uh, my ID because I had to give him to the ID uh for for the contract and stuff and he goes uh what kind of name is this and i said oh i'm i'm from india i'm, I'm actually indian and he goes samosas and i was like that that is that is a food we eat that is a fun food okay i kind of wish all racists would do that though right like wouldn't that just make fucking racism a little bit more fun <laughs> if like every time that they like brought up an ethnicity, like they just randomly yelled out a food from their nation, right? Where you're like, oh, you're Greek baklava. And it's like, oh man, it's aggressive, but it's also kind of nice, you know, <laughs> like it's fine. <laughs> so that's what this guy did. And then he like talked to me about various, that's all he did. He just talked to me about various different Indian foods. He didn't tell me whether he liked them or not. He just recognized that they existed. That's all he did. He was like samosas, naan chicken tikka masala those and i was like yep those are all things that exist thank you for recognizing them i think and then he sat down and pulled out a piece of paper right ruled piece of paper and physically wrote out a contract in pen but as i was sitting there i was like man i'm not a real estate expert or nothing but I don't think you're supposed to like physically write out a contract, right? Like I'm not a lawyer person or nothing, but I feel like this is fucking weird. So he writes it out, <laughs> makes me sign it. And then I gave him the deposit. He gave me the keys and I went in. He was like, welcome to the apartment, right? So I was like, fuck yeah, let's do this, right? And I was very excited. I went in. The girl I was dating at the time, she... Um, she helped me clean the place. Like we had to vacuum out the stove, guys. That's how fucking grody this thing was. We had to vacuum out. Like this, I'm I'm living in a health hazard. I might have lived in the place where COVID exist, like was invented. Like this is might be the origins of the novel coronavirus, and I lived there for a little while, right? Like we had to take uh, bleach in a bowl and just like hold it up to the shower nozzle. Cause it was that fucking gross you guys. Right. But we cleaned it up. It took us like a couple days to do it. And I moved all my shit in. Right. I didn't tell my parents I was moving out. <laughs> Cause like, that's where, I, that's where we were in our, in our relationship. I didn't tell them I was moving out. Uh, and, and, and my mom texts me and she goes, your stuff is missing. And I was like, it's in my new apartment. <laughs> she was like, what the fuck? <laughs> So that's how my mom found out <laughs> that I moved out. So I like got everything together. You know, it, it the apartment came with a desk. It came with a, a, a couch. Uh, it came with like a TV stand and stuff. And I moved all my stuff in very excited. And I had this like extra sheet, right? This extra blanket. And I was like, well, I'll throw it over the couch and make it look nice. So uh, the, the sheet was like not the right fit. So I had these clips so I stuck the clips on on top of the couch so that the the sheet would stick because, you know, I, I'm living in an apartment that's gonna fall apart. Like I feel like that's not the worst that I could have done. Uh, and so everything was fine for a little while. You know, every 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 time rent was due, I would see this old Egyptian man and he would yell foods at me, right? And I would be like, "Yep, cool. Those are okay. 
that's awesome. Uh, you know foods, man. You're you're like a food guy. You're that's you're you're nailing it. You're nailing all the foods. What do you got? A menu in your house that you just kind of read off, and, and you're like, I'll pick the top three <laughs> this menu. So, a couple months later, this is after the new year, right? I'd lived there for, I don't know, maybe like three, three, three and a half months, something like that. It was uh, it was a couple days after New Year's, and it was like this cold snap that just showed up out of nowhere, uh, as as they kind of do, uh, right? A and you know, all the weather people were like, "We didn't even know this could happen." It's like, "Yep, it's one degree outside." Uh, you you, you want to say climate change now, weatherman? Do you want to No, You're just going to ignore it and be all befuddled as to how this is happening. It's not because we're uh, burning a hole into the soul of the planet. No, for prop. No. OK. All right. Let's just all pretend everything's fine. So <laughs> it's one degrees outside. And I get a, a you know, I, I went out with a friend of mine uh, that I'd known for a little while and, and we got a couple drinks. And so I, I walk back to my apartment. And I see this old Egyptian man outside and he goes, uh, take space heater from Hall. And I said, oh, OK, uh, what's the problem? And he goes, I fight. I fight with a heating man. I was like, what? So basically, he got into a fight with the HVAC guy to fix the heater and the HVAC guy fucking pieced. And he was like, I'm done with this. And he bailed out. So the building doesn't have heat. So we had to call a replacement guy. Right. So I text my girlfriend at the time and she goes, oh, you can't like stay in that apartment. It's one degree outside. Like there's a single degree. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. You have to come stay with me. So I packed up some stuff and I go over to her place and I stay with her for a couple of days. So a couple of days go by. I come back to the apartment and everything seems to be fine. And I walk down and I, and I had a part time job at a museum at the time. And I'm walking I'm about to leave to, you know, go go to the uh, go to work at the museum. And I see this man at the front and I open the door and I was like, hey, are you trying to get in? He goes, yeah, I'm from the light company uh, and the building's been condemned. So I have to technically shut off the electricity. And I was like, well, wait, what are you doing? <laughs> what? What do you, why are you here? <laughs> and for like half a second, I just wanted to shut the door and try to figure out like a different way out of the building. And I was like, what are you <laughs> talking about? So he looks at me and he goes, how do you not know? Like you do, you live here, right? And I was like, yeah, I live here. And he goes, yeah, the building has <laughs> been condemned. And I was like, well, what the fuck happened? Why is the building condemned? And he, so he, he was like, you should look it up. There's actually like a story on the news about what happened, but apparently some old man almost died of hypothermia because there, because there was no heat in the building for like a day. And the HVAC guy that came to fix it had to call 911 uh, and, you know, like the heat's fixed, but th when the city has to be called for something like that, they have to run an inspection of the building. And when they ran an inspection of the building, they basically found all this shit wrong with it. And now the building's condemned and nobody can live here. Like legally, nothing that is actually alive can be inside of this building. And I was like, well, that sucks because I am very much alive and a lot of my stuff is in there. <laughs> so. I had to corroborate this guy's story, right? You know, I, I don't know if he's just pulling my chain or whatever. So I look it up online and I look up, you know, what's going on. And there's, lo and behold, there was an article exactly saying what that was, right? This, it, the, my landlord stayed in the apartment with no heat. He's 85 years old. He got hypothermia. The following day, the HVAC guy came in, couldn't get a hold of him, called uh, the city to try to get into the apartment. Uh, they figured out that something's wrong broke two doors to get him out of there, basically almost found him dead and had to resuscitate him on the way oh, to the hospital. <laughs> so when I got the news, dude was still in the hospital, right? <laughs> so then I call, uh, there was a, a name of the city inspector. So I called the city inspector and I was like, yo, what's up? And he was like, oh, if you don't know, you should get your shit out of there. Uh, and you should ask for your security deposit and your rent back because you're not really like legally like the like your contract is void. Uh, and I was like, but I feel like the contract was void when it was handwritten, but uh, duly noted. <laughs> so the, I, I go in and I'm like panicking because I don't know what the fuck to do. And I, you know, I talked to my manager. My manager was basically like, uh, go home. Like what? Go pack your shit up. 
and fi- like figure out where you need to go, right? So I had to call my mom. <laughs> and we'd kind of patch things up at this point. And, you know, I called her and I let her know what's going on. She was like, yeah, just come back. Stay here till you find a new place and everything will be fine. So I start packing my stuff up and I start moving out. The next day, you know, because I can't take everything all in one day. The next day I go back to the apartment and I'm picking up more of my stuff. I see the the 85 year old landlord and I look at him and I go, hey, man, do you know the apartment's condemned? And he goes, ah, city don't know anything. And I was like, I'm kind of sure that they do, actually. And he was like, no, no, uh, the building not condemned. The building is fine. Everything fine. They lie. They lie. I have lawsuit against them. They lie. I was like, what the fuck? So I called the city (laughs) inspector again. And he goes, yes, he has a lawsuit against the city for breaking the two doors that they had to break in order to get into his apartment and save his fucking life. So this dude is suing people that saved his life because they claim that the building is condemned. So then, you know, I start meeting a couple of people because everybody's kind of moving out of the building all at the same time. Right. And I start talking to these people and they go, yeah, you know, my dad's a lawyer. We can technically file a suit against him if he doesn't give us our deposit, so on and so forth. So finally we, we catch him in the hallway and we go, Hey man, you owe us our deposit back and you owe us this month's rent back. And he goes, no, 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 no city at fault. You, you contact city city at fault. So we're like, fuck, man. He goes, no, 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 I'm not going to give anything back. City, It's city at fault. City will pay. City will pay. So we were like, all right, I guess we're going to have to take this to like small claims court to get our fucking money back. And that's not the that's not the weirdest part about this. Right. As I'm moving out to my car, he's standing out front watching people move out and he pulls me aside at one point and he goes, hey, you had clips on your couch. I was like, what? He goes, you have clips on couch. The very nice clips. Can I have, can I have clip? And I was like, are you asking me for the clips that I held my couch together with? <laughs> also, how do you know that I have that? I didn't invite you into my apartment at, at some point. So it seems like this dude would just randomly go into people's apartments to check out what the fuck they had. I was like, that can't be fucking legal. So I get my shit out of there as quickly as possible. And I moved back to my parents' place. And a day later, I realized my green card is missing. In, in the shuffle of everything, I had lost my green card. So I call, you know, the immigration department. And I was like, what do I do? And they were like, well, you go online and you order a replacement. It's going to cost you 450 bucks and an additional $50 for uh, printing costs. Uh, And, you know, once you do that, we'll turn off the other one. So, like, if somebody uses your green card, then uh, then we know that they're at fault. Then we know that somebody's trying to, like, steal your identity. And I was like, well, shit, Uh, that sucks. I don't have five hundred dollars just to drop on a new fucking green card. So I was like, I'll go back and I'll try to, like, rummage through the apartment and see if it fell somewhere or something like that. And I go to the apartment and it's fucking locked and I can't get in. So I'm on, I'm trying to, I tried to call the landlord. I call the cops and the cops were like, we can't do anything. Like they're, you know, we just, our hands are tied. So I say, fuck. I was real pissed about it. And I had to order a new green card. Right. So a couple months later, I was finally able to go to small claims court, file a suit against this guy. And the clerk goes, Hey, you're like the fourth person to come in to file a suit against this dude. Uh, really, you guys can just file like a class action suit against them and probably get like way more money. And then they were like, when you fill out this number, put all the costs down. Like if you have moving expenses, if something broke, it, you know, if you had to replace something, like put all that down. And I was like, Bup, green card, going to get my 500 bucks back. And so, you know, the day comes where I have to go to court to, to testify against this dude. And, and the judge calls me up and he's not in the court. The landlord does not show up to the to the court date. And the judge was like, I'm familiar with this dude. Uh, and he goes, you should do your homework on this guy. And I go, okay. And he's like, he's never come in for, like, never been missing from one of these. He always loses uh, because he does some real wacky shit. I was like, oh, you mean like writing a contract physically in pen that I have? And he was like, sure. <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, but he was like, something seems to be wrong. He was like, look to see, like, drive past the apartment and see if there are any lights on. 
and then call me at this number, right? So I do that. There's some lights on. I call the judge and he goes, okay, now I can say that somebody's in the apartment and when they're not supposed to be. And now I can put, you know, a call out to the, to the postal service to see if there's mail being collected because if mail's being collected, then he's in there and he's like doing shit. But if the mail's not being collected, then something's wrong and we can get a warrant to go in and search the premises. I was like, cool, man, you do that. You do what you got to do. And he goes, yeah, also look this dude up because you're going to want to <laughs> see what this dude's all about. So I do. I look up the dude. And lo and behold, he has human rights violations against him. <laughs> Why, you might ask? Well, uh, because the, the apartment is for college students, right? International students that come in. It's cheap housing. So most of the people are like grad school students, undergrad students living away from home. Uh, and a couple of times when there have been specifically Asian students that show up to his door, he does some real bizarre racist shit. Uh, like he said, uh, like one of the kids that I remember reading was this Asian kid. He was like 18 and he'd shown up with his foster family. Uh, and he was basically like, uh, uh, he said, don't come into the building. I have to do something first. Goes and gets raid. And he, and he says, I have to spray you down with raid because you know how the Chinese have cockroaches on them. And I was like, I don't know. I don't, I've, never even, I've never even heard of this stereotype before. That's a new one to me. Like, I was like, finally, I think they're getting creative. They're still wrong. They're still fucking crazy wrong. But boy, howdy, this is a new one, huh? You shocked me, racists. You finally shocked me. <laughs> Holy shit. I never thought I'd see the day. So this kid sues him. It goes through the Pennsylvania, all the way up to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. And they go, yeah, you're committing human rights violations. You can't do that. You can't spray chemicals on a human person. <laughs> like, that's not something you should do. So I was like, this is fucking nuts. That's my first fucking apartment, right? So I don't hear back from the judge for a while. I get a new place. Uh, and get all that set up. And, and the new place was much better. You know, it was a room in a house. It was way better. Uh, the shower worked. I didn't have to vacuum anything out of the stove. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty nice stuff there. And all, all of a sudden, it's July. It's about three months after my uh, court date, my original court date. And I get a call from the judge. And he goes, hey, uh, I got good news and I got bad news. I go, okay, well, and he's like, which one do you want to start with? And I was like, which one's less upsetting? And I was like, I don't know. Uh, let's go with this news. Your landlord's dead. And I was like, uh, what? <laughs> Say that again? And he's like, yeah, the guy you're suing, uh, he died. And I was like, the fuck are you talking about? And he was like, yeah. So basically, we figured out that uh, something was wrong when 30 days went by and no mail was picked up at this address. So the postal, uh, post office let me know. We got a warrant. We went in. We checked it out, and the dude had passed away uh, from another uh, hypothermic heart attack. Like, he was in a cold apartment, got a heart attack, passed away. And I was like, what the fuck are we talking about right now, dude? <laughs> and he was like, well, and I was like, which news was that? And the judge goes, you tell me. And I was like, uh, I kind of feel like that's not the good news. <laughs> but what about the what about my deposit? And he goes, well, technically, you can't sue a dead guy. And I was like, well, when you say technically, I feel like there's probably a loophole where you could sue dead people. But that's a conversation for another time that I'm not ready to have now. Uh, and I was like, OK, that's fair. And they, I was like, well, so what are my options? And he goes, well, you got the The building is up for auction. It's, it's going to be auctioned by the city. Uh, whoever buys it, you know, you can figure that out and then basically sue them for what this dude owes you. And I was like, OK, well, how long is that process going to take? And he goes, I don't know. It depends on when people buy the building. You know, it could get bought out in 10 days. It could get bought out in 10 years. It's up to you. You figure out what you want to do with it. And I was like, you know, I kind of feel like I'm going to let this one go kind of feel like I should just leave this one be. So I didn't do anything about it. 
uh, and I kind of, you know, I was just like, all right, I think, I think this chapter's closed, but it was one of those big, big things where I was like, I was trying to escape the issues I was dealing with my parents. And I just kind of blindly went into a completely different situation where I literally need to escape. <laughs> so that's the story of, uh, of my very first apartment. Uh, I hope you guys learned something from that, uh, which is that I was dumb. That's... <laughs> <laughs> that is insane dude yeah those are all the wow. i made so you had to get a new green card mm -hmm. you never found that nope i wasn't even able to get back into the building it's <laughs> <laughs> terrible yeah. so i had to i had to like um get a new green card took six months to get a new green card because that's how long it takes to print it uh i don't <laughs> I wish I was making that up, but that's literally what the email they sent me said. <laughs> oh, they were like, it's gonna take a while because it takes a really long time to print. And I was like, that's not a real thing. I kind of feel like you guys are just being dicks. That's <laughs> primarily what I think is happening. Agreed. Uh <laughs> And that has been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you hit that like button and hit that share button. Get the word out uh, on YouTube and Facebook. This kind of content is pretty often suppressed and sometimes even gets deleted from their site. So it's very important that uh, you guys hit the like and the shares. That always helps us uh, find new viewers on the algorithm. And if you're trying to subvert censorship the best place to do that is rockfin uh, rockfin is the blockchain cryptocurrency video platform site that is all about helping content creators earn an income from what they create and there's absolutely no censorship on that platform so if you want to follow me on rockfin you can follow me at uh, rockfin.com slash krishmohan ha ha and if you want much more content, uh, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, you can find all my stand-up comedy albums there. You can find past episodes of this show. Uh, if you missed a live stream, they're up on the website there. You can catch past episodes of my interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk. And you can make a donation. If, you, if you're on stable financial ground and you want to help support the show financially, you can do so directly on my website by making either a one-time donation, which acts as, uh, you know, some super chats, uh, as it were, or you can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets to the virtual and when live comedy comes back, live comedy shows, as well as additional bonus content, which includes stand-up comedy shows, uh, and you can ask me questions uh, and, and leave comments for me as, um, as a sustaining member as well. So once again, you can go do that over at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -H. Thank you very much for tuning in, and there will be a new episode next week, so stay tuned.